Welcome to Canard Boulevard. Last week we left you with the new prop installed, everything working great. So now we're going to do the final button up and get this airplane ready to fly on its first test flight in four months after maintenance. Coming up. Now I did torque on the propeller a few days ago. Now that it's sat for a couple of hours, I have retorqued it again just because the, the wood inside does tend to compress. And now I'm safety wiring those bolts in place. That keeps the bolts from uh, being able to come vibrate loose. And that does take a little bit of a uh, practice to do. Now that the safety wiring is complete on there, I'm going to clean the airplane because it is filthy, covered in dust and crap, four months of stuff just living in the hangar and it's really kind of filthy. So I'm first blowing it off and then I'll use the cleaner to uh, clean the airplane and make it. Oh, and I did put a couple stickers on the side. All right, over to the engine. I'm going to pull the plugs out because I need to be able to turn the engine without any compression in it. So I'm going to pull the top plugs out. And while I'm doing that, I might as well clean them. I have a uh, plug cleaner, so I'll clean the four top plugs and regap them. Those are the aviation plugs in the top of the engine. Then we are back to the airplane taking the plastic off the prop because we're going to be spinning it around in just a, a few minutes. And now I'll do the final inspections, make sure everything looks good. All right, this beautiful new prop is installed. I've uh, pulled the plugs out of the, the top plugs out of the cylinders. So there's no compression. The oil is heated up, it's nice and thin. So now we are going to crank the engine and uh, get some oil up into the galleys and on the cam and everything with no load on the engine, which is why I took the plugs out. This is the first time this prop is turned on this engine. This is the first time this engine was cranked over in four months. So uh, I think I've done all the preparation I need to. I've checked and double checked, and I think we're good to uh, crank. All right, fuel is off. Extra full lean. Bags both off. Master on, and clear prop. Okay, no problems. All right, so now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna crank it until I start seeing some oil pressure. Got up to 30 PSI of oil pressure. That's uh, about as long as I want to run the starter. It's, uh, it's getting a little bit warm, but uh, that seems to have worked well. We had some oil pressure moving through the engine. Um, next, while I have the plugs out, I'm going to bore scope the cylinders. Might as well, the plugs are out. Um, I'm going to submit those pictures. I use Savvy Aviation, which is Mike Bush's. Um, uh, maintenance, aircraft maintenance company and he has a new product where you can submit your your cylinder bore scope pictures and they will analyze them and then identify trends over time so I'm gonna take some pictures of my cylinders right now uh, so I have a baseline going forward and, and uh, that way um, if there are any changes to my engine in the future I will be able to see exactly what those changes are and uh, they already monitor my my engine EIS so um, this will, this will help that. I do have to uh, check the prop tips to make sure that they are in the same plane. So we'll check the prop tips, we'll get the plugs back in, and uh, now that they're nice and clean, we'll get cowls back on, spinner on, and then uh, we're ready for some ground run tests, and then after that we'll be ready for some flight testing. Happening soon! In the bore scope inspection, you can see me turning the prop as I do this because as I put the camera in, I have to move the engine through the various cycles. I want to see the piston all the way down so I can get a look at the piston crown. And then I also have to manipulate it so that I can see both the intake and exhaust valves both closed and open. And when they're open, I want to have a look at the valve seats. And I also want to have a look at the valve stems so that I can get a full picture of what the cylinder looks like. And lastly, I will take a picture of the cylinder walls so that you can see what uh, if there's any scoring or corrosion anywhere inside the, the cylinder itself. 
And now that I've finished that inspection, I'm reinstalling and torquing the spark plugs and then connecting the spark plug wires. So the plugs are in, ready to go. Well, I was doing a just a sanity check final inspection on everything that I touched. And I discovered that the mixture control here, you can see, is actually hitting this rivet right here on the uh, air box. So I am gonna have to drill out that rivet, unfortunately, and maybe trim this little piece of fiberglass that I uh, glassed in there to give that the proper clearance because that can't be, that's, that's actually hitting right there. Uh, I actually, when I moved the uh, mixture, when I was doing the uh, prop run up to get, build up some oil pressure, I felt a notchiness. So I thought I need to check that and that's definitely what's going on there. So let me draw that out now. This is a fairly simple fix. I did put some tape over uh, anything that I didn't want any kind of uh, dust or anything going into just to make sure that it doesn't somehow find its way into the intake of the engine. Now that that's finished, it's time to final inspect and get that lower cowling on. This is a really, really hard thing to do by yourself. Uh, I wish I had somebody here helping me with this, but I didn't and there was nobody at the airport today because it was just way too windy to be out flying really. So there was not many people at the airport. So I spent all this time up and down, up and down trying to get this thing in. I really detest taking this lower cowl off. It's no fun at all. But as you can see, I finally do get it up in place and start screwing into place and it's looking good. So what I do is I put all the screws in and just loose. I don't tighten any of them just to make sure they all line up and they all start get put in and they're not cross-threaded and they're all, they're all just started. And then once I have all the screws in, then I go over them and tighten them all up, which is what you see me doing here. Now I'll be tightening all those screws up. Now that uh, I've, oh, actually what I did is I went and got a headlight on because I got tired of trying to hold a flashlight in my mouth, which is kind of painful. All right, so now the lower cowl is on, it's time to fit the upper cowl in place. And that again is not easy to do on your own, easier than the bottom cowl. And oh no, we have a problem. It doesn't look like it's fitting properly. Why is it not fitting? Something's very, very wrong here and I have to take the cowl back off. All right, we do have a problem. Apart from the fact that I managed to, yes, I scratched my brand new prop putting the bottom cowl on. It's really tough to do that by yourself. Um, so I did have a problem getting this side to fit because uh, this new oil breather tube, uh, there wasn't quite enough clearance on the cowl there, so I did have to do a little bit of filing there. No big deal. However, the other problem is this. This was not here before. And uh, the cowl uh, is impinging on this space right here. I can't really move this, I don't think. Uh, not really, I'll try and see if I can slide it back, but I think I'm going to have to actually cut and modify the cowl. So if you look at where it's coming, it's right this spot, right that little divot right there. And on the inside, you can see this right here. That little bump right there is touching it. So I'm, I'm gonna have to strip off this heat shield foil here, grind away some of this, reform it, raise it up, maybe a, oh, probably a three quarters of an inch. And then I uh, put some new uh, fiberglass on there, new heat shield, give it a, a quick, paint on the top there um so oh, that's not great so i was gonna try and finish this today but uh well maybe i'll go get some dinner and come back later tonight and start grinding away at this and see what i can do not great so that's exactly what i did do i went home had some dinner came back now i'm i'm putting some uh bubble wrap and then covering that in duct tape here because I want a little bit of space. I don't want the cowl touching that heat shroud. So I wanna make sure that whatever I set up, there's gonna be some room in there. So now I'm gonna, uh, I've done taken some measurements and cutting a chunk out of the cowl and we'll test fit it to see how, how good it is. And I'm, I'm trying to do little bits at a time here. I don't wanna cut a massive hole. That one needs a little bit more. So we'll cut a little bit more on there, test it again and see how it fits. And it looks about right. And we'll just go ahead and just grind out and smooth out that with the grinder at this point and smooth all the other edges. And that's exactly what we're gonna use is that little hole right there. 
Next, we're going to take some uh, duct tape because the epoxy won't stick to duct tape. So I'm putting some duct tape with the, the non-sticky side facing outward. And then I thought, well, I need to sand that. I probably should have sanded it before I did the duct tape, but what have you. And I'll speed the sanding up because nothing is more boring than watching sanding. So as I go ahead and sand off all this beautiful paint and through the primer and the micro and everything else on here so that I can do some new layups, just fix up, uh, clean up and fix up that uh, uh, duct tape. And I do have some bubble wrap in there to push it outwards because I do want to have it coming outwards. And I'm putting, uh, I think with seven layers of bid on here along with the epoxy and that will t take the shape of that little bulb that I have pushing out with the bubble wrap and the duct tape behind it. So I'll have a little bulge right there at the uh, on the cowling. I put one extra piece to make uh, the transition a little less. Puts heat on so it'll cure faster. Hey, it's another day. You can see it's fully cured. I peel off the duct tape from the backside. And now I am going to go in with my cutting wheel and just cut off all the flashing and excess uh, little bits of fiberglass that cured in a position that I don't want it to be. And then we'll sand all the sharp edges because fiberglass is very sharp. We'll do a test fit, make sure it fits okay, everything looks good. And now we start sanding and sanding and sanding because we want the transitions to be quite smooth. And I'm not gonna make you sit through all this, so let's speed up all of that. Next, I'm going to put on another coat of uh, epoxy there just a skim coat and now I'm mixing up micro and I'm wearing a mask because this is a microscopic glass spheres micro balloons and they are not good if you breathe them in so uh, I, as as I'm mixing this up it turns it into a white slurry that hardens it's very lightweight but it's very strong and so I'm coating that on there it'll give it a nice smooth surface put the heat on let it cure Another day goes by, and now I'm going to, you can see the, the uh, micro has uh, slumped a little bit there, so I'm just trimming off where it did kind of slump and, and move off the back there, and sanding. So micro is not too bad to sand. It sands fairly nicely. However, you do end up with kind of a ton of little pinholes in there, and you can just spend your life going back and forth and micro and, and then sand, then micro and sand. But instead, what you do is you just put a single layer of epoxy skim coat on top. It fills all the pinholes. And as you can see, come back the next day, you have a nice smooth surface, just a very light sanding, and it's good for finishing. So now I'm just gonna uh, finish, get this all ready to go, clean it, wipe it clean. And now we're ready for the first coat of primer. This is a very special primer that uh, helps block UV to prevent the breakdown of the fiberglass underneath. So we'll put a couple coats of that, the heat on in between to let them, the individual coats dry, a little bit of sanding in between, and then we will top coat it with a white. But for this video, I think we'll leave it right here because the next video, we go flying. That's right, yes, we will actually get flying in the next video. I know we were hoping that was gonna happen for this one, but I decided, you know what, I don't want a, a one hour video of mostly just going through problems with a little bit of flying. So I thought, you know what, the test flight we will do separately. So this is gonna be the end of this video. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. And of course, please, uh, subscribe to this channel. It, it hit the little bell so you get notified when I do post a video. It really helps me out when you do that. And of course, please click like on this video. That really helps me out a lot too. All right, that's it for this video. Next one, we go flying. I promise. Thanks for watching.